Okay. Another Brian's rant today. We haven't had a Brian's rant in a while. I'm just sitting here and I was like, man, let me get these guys, let me get my people more content, okay? For y'all, y'all that are growing with me on this YouTube channel, we're gonna try to do something different today, you know. I'm processing some applications right now, I'm processing some UBL applications. You guys see me, I'm on Cop America. Uh, we're dealing with the underwriter Elon. I've already cranked up uh, my VP. You, you don't know about this stuff if you're not one of my students, but um, I wanted to kind of just go through my, my day in the life, how I process the application. Sometimes it's not every day hectic today. I got a kind of soft, easy day. Not, not not too much on my calendar until about noon. It's it's eight at um today. Just got out the gym, feeling great. So I want to continue the good mojo by processing some applications, getting some approvals for my client uh, here as we proceed. So I uh, got the recap report on the right, uh, and and actually we're going to be reacting. Uh, so I'm going to be processing the applications. Of course, I can be showing you all sensitive information. Uh, so I'll, I'll get started here. We'll get, you know, we're processing with Elon. Elon is the underwriter. Comp America is the bank. If you know, you know. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just put it to you like that. But we're going to go over there. And, and usually when I'm when I'm working, uh, I got YouTube going now because I'm a YouTube addict. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and switch right here to my boy, Jay Tizzle. JT is reacting to this, this Tref Tulsa real estate fund. And JT is the pettiest dude on YouTube. Okay. Um, I think me and him, we're going to, we're going to, we're trying to go for the pettiest, um, pettiest, uh, a word on YouTube, but. We're going to see JT here reacting. I'm processing the application. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this play. I'll pause it, put in my input, you know, whenever I need to. But vibe with me today. JT's real reaction. JT's real reaction. Let's go ahead and see how we're going With my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. With JT. Hey, Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watchers right. with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. That means I am a real financial advisor. I do not simply play one on, YouTube, on the internet. And listen, it's been a while. I know, I know, it's been a while. But I warned you guys, I told you, during tax season, it's going to be tough doing live streams. But tax season is almost over. Yep. But some of you may be asking, back. JT, if tax season isn't over yet, what would pull you out of your cave to do a live stream? Why are you doing the live stream? It's a talk You've shit. Got work to do. I know. I've got work to do. But I got a phone call this morning, a phone call from Mr. Tony Robinson, a.k.a. Tony the Closer. And go. Tony said that he was interested in buying some new real estate. I asked him, well, <laughs> What are you interested in buying? He said there's a Patty JT in Atlanta, Georgia that he just might buy. This dude crazy. And when he said it, hey, let me I work. said to myself, I know what he's talking about. Let I have work. an idea of what he's thinking about. Could it be? <laughs> Could it be? The Black House. Could it be, JT? Could it be the Black House? So I want you guys. By the way, link to the full video in the description, please. Check this out. Uh, watch the link video. Pocket watching with JT. Dang, JT. JT's got a hundred and some. I mean, I started watching you when you had like 2,000 subscribers, man. Great work, man. Uh, definitely a great channel. I, I love this YouTube phase that we're in right now because there was so much scamming shit going on that you have the the JTs, you have the Spencer Cornelius, you have the uh, the pocket, uh, what is it, Coffeezilla uh, out there. So, anyway. Look at this here. We've built the economic vehicle the revitalization of the urban community in the past era and regulated farms built on the mission to stop gentrification and to allow us to pull our resources, our talents, and treasure together to rebuild our communities, to support one another, to share in the risk, to share in the profit, Share the legacy of the 21st century Black Wall Street. This 21st century real estate fund for us. 
you know, that's one of the things when I started um, Broker Solutions Academy or even Pennington Consulting Group, um, I never really understood this black man, black fun thing. You know, clearly I'm a black man, uh, originally born and raised in Africa, but I mean, I'm getting older now. I've spent more time in the U.S. than I have in Africa. Uh, but I never, my thoughts on racism, before I go on a rant, you know, but it is Brian's rant video. Really, I can't go on a rant. My thoughts on racism is, in Africa, when we grew up, we never really saw race. To a degree, we, we saw the white man as superior because he was always at church. But there was never, so a correction, we did see race. We never really saw hate within race, if that makes any kind of sense. There was a difference. If this guy was um, white and I'm black, we understood that this person was white. And generally, what I want to say is the people that we saw that was white were in positions of power. They were either teachers, they were either pastors. So my relationship with these people that were, quote unquote, white, was in a respect standpoint. I didn't really have a lot of young white kids. There was no white kids that I associated with. Um, I say that to kind of say that in the U.S., I see that this, when you see race as much as it is, that's when it becomes an issue. Um, because is there racism? Absolutely. Have I faced racism? Yes. But I think the I think that sometimes ideas like this black empowerment, black real estate, Tulsa real estate fund only for black people. These are things that, in my opinion, and I'm not an expert on this. All I know is how to get people money for business. But we're talking about Brian's ranch here. You were watching the video. I didn't tell you to watch this shit. But these these things prolong this bullshit. So I never wanted to take the approach. Even when I'm marketing my business that I'm on black empowerment, black, this it's it's corny to me. And I think that most of these people are taking advantage of black people with this black empowerment bullshit. But in which I drink is he? Is anybody else saying corny? Is Bullshit. This is the statement regarding the source of funds, and you can fill that in right here in this line right here. This is just saying that it's also a little safe fund is provided as long as the person. Center, getting ready to start some demo on this huge project. I gotta pause this. I remember when when I started paying attention to this brother. If you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jay Morrison. Uh, clearly watching a video about Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Man, I, I was. This is somebody that I looked up to. I really did. Like this brother was really. I learned from him. You know and. He was really doing something great. And, man, I, I don't know if... Uh, I need to make a video about how not to get distracted with the distractions. But I guess... I mean, the, the guy raised like 12, 50, 50... I don't know how many million, million dollars to be able to do this. You know? And it's it puts a bad taste in my mouth. It, put, it puts a bad taste in all black people's... Um, you know, when, when people do shit like this... And white people do this too, but... You know, white people don't do that white people shit. Oh, this is just for white people to you ain't never seen a white person do nothing like that. You know, but this black stuff is just... And everyone's really excited. It's I just I just wanted to point out that I listened to this guy. This guy was really doing some real shit. And now we got another, you know, brother, black brother, whatever the fuck you want to call it, that, you know, it's just going to look like, like, like a scam. It just it shit looks bad. It's like, you know, from a hip-hop perspective, if it, you know, the the... the the sexy reds and the and the Nicki Minaj and the fucking Cardi B's. People tend to look at all black women like that. All our little girls are looked at like fucking sexy red. So from a financial standpoint, people start to look at me and start judging me like I'm fucking Jay Morrison and shit because of this bullshit that he this motherfucker be doing. You know this him five hundreds and all this shit. Anyway. <laughs> 
ready to break ground. Happy groundbreaking day! This is a glorious day! Look, 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 the black people, you got the little black... These are things, and I'm pointing this out because they thought about all this shit. This is the racistness in these people. You shouldn't celebrate your race like this because, in, in a sense, you're undermining other people's rights. I understand, you know, from a... Okay. So, you know, like in high school, you have the rivalries. And it's not like it's a rivalry in the sense of like from a sports standpoint. Like when I'm, you know, I'm always against whatever team. My son is a big Kansas City uh, uh, Thieves fan. I would say Kansas City Thieves. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about, Kansas City Chiefs. But I always go against them. I'm a Dallas fan because, you know, I, I don't even give a shit about sports. But I just try to, it's a, it's a competitiveness. But it's not like I wish bad for the the, the Chiefs. I remember it was last year that uh, Patrick Mahone had got hurt. And my son, you know, we were in the car getting from school and he started crying, you know, because this is, I mean, he's like nine years old, eight, nine years old. You know, this is his guy and he's crying and he's, you know, and I was, you know, it's not like I'm cheering on, fuck Patrick Mahone, let that nigga die. So I can wait. No, it's, I was kind of felt sad. I was like, it's okay, you know. So when I, in relation to this, when I see this black celebration, it's like, it's black celebrated, but to demean the white people, you know, which leads. That's why you see people like Kanye put that white lives matter. It's not like, OK, why are you wearing the black lives matter? Shit stupid. <laughs> Here in the city of East Point, yes. our first asset in the groundbreaking of this state of the art economic empowerment center. We call it the Legacy Center, a.k.a. the Black House. For real estate fund investors, the Black House is officially for sale. It is listed on this Instagram page as of today, and we know that the road has finally come to an end. The $11.7 million that Jay Morrison raised is now almost all gone. Recently, he said he was liquidating the fund, and so we knew that this would be the next step. He's already refinanced this building, took out $1.5 million to cover his management fees and excessive losses in terms of operations on the Black House, and now the fund is about to be bankrupt. Look at this shit. Look at this bullshit right here. Fucking embarrassing. Then they use religion. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit here. And we have... All right, so as you see, with the level of pettiness that I have, you know, I could not allow this news to go by without saying something. And the fact that Julian, in a few moments, Julian will be giving his address as the lead investor of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I decided to do an old school episode of Pocket Watching with JT. I haven't done this in a very long time. We're going to have a watch party together. So as soon party. as Julian goes live, we'll watch it together. And then when Julian is done giving his address, as the lead investor of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, finding out, you know, not directly, but indirectly finding out that apparently uh, Jay Morrison, over a Zoom meeting with around 60 investors, even though I'm told there's 15,000 investors, but on a Zoom meeting of around 60 investors, he announced that the fund will be liquidating and apparently selling the Black House. And Julian, the lead investor, the man who put the most amount of money in this fund, he wasn't invited to the party. He wasn't told. So he'll be going live in a minute, and we're going to have some fun. We'll sit back and listen to what Julian has to say, and then we'll be taking callers, and we're going to call it a night. Is that all right? Is That's that all right with me. That, I just want to give a shout out to all of you who've been holding strong. I know the pocket watcher has been very, very busy during tax season, but I just got to give a shout out to each and every one of you. Special shout out to Yvette. Thank you so much. Uh, Yvette Marie uh, says, keep up. This should not be a shock to anyone, to be honest. I'm sure uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, the PhD in finance, he may be shocked by this because I guess looking at financial statements of a business that you invested in is a little too much work for him to do. He's, he's too busy to actually look at the financial statements of a business that he promoted and he invested in. 
But if you were actually looking at the financial statements, something that a financial advisor actually does, if you look at the financial statements, then you would have known, not yesterday, not six months ago, not two years ago, but on year one, you can look at the financial statements and the documents that founded the uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, you would have known that today, this day, was coming. That there was almost no other outcome when it comes to the Tulsa Real Estate Fund other than liquidation. Either liquidation voluntarily or being forced to liquidate through bankruptcy. Either or, that really was the only route when you look at what the hell was going on? So let's let's just make sure we're looking at the scoreboard together. Let's be clear. We have a man who openly admits to be a high school dropout, to be a three-time felon, a man who claims that he sold crack cocaine to his own father. Okay. A man who there has been claimed long before the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, but claims from old business partners that he had unethical practices and that he cheated his old business partners out of money, all before the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. This man then starts the fund. When he starts the fund, He's currently in personal chapter seven bankruptcy. I just want to be clear, right? Maybe I'm missing something. He was in personal chapter seven bankruptcy. When he started this fund. While he was starting the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Wow. Just for those of you who are unaware, bankruptcy is a legal process where you openly admit to all of your creditors, listen, I ain't got it. I mismanaged my own funds. I took on way too much debt and responsibility to pay the debt back. And I do not have the financial resources to pay you back the Okay? And, okay, Julian is coming up live here in a second. We got about two or three minutes, really two minutes, about two minutes before Julian goes live. We're going to follow that. But I just want y'all to pay attention. The man was in personal bankruptcy when he started the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. So if a man who cannot personally manage his own money to be able to pay bills as they come due, you're going to trust this man with almost $12 million. Wow, that's how much they raised. Your money. Why? Well, of course, he's doing it for the culture, right? He's doing, if he's doing it for the culture, we can ignore our silly little things like qualifications, education, experience, wow. a background check for criminal behavior in your past. We can ignore all of that oh, because that he's doing it for the culture. And a few years later, a few years down the road, where are we? We're right here with the liquidation of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, apparently. So let's see uh, what Julian has to say. I'm very interested. The man put $40,000 of his own money in the fund. So I think it's important to hear the brother out. But let's just pay attention. And there's going to be an opportunity for you guys to call in after we're done watching what Julian has to present. But... I don't, I don't want to be the guy that says, I told you so. I don't want to be. I just happen to be that fella. That's all. I'm just that guy. So here we go. Good evening. Dear Tulsa Real Estate Fund Investors, it is with a heavy heart that I must inform you of the imminent closure of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, also known as TRAC. Today, the Legacy Center, which is also known as the Black House, was listed for sale. This is the fulcrum that Jay Morrison has been avoiding because it solidifies the sinking of the trap Titanic, an embarrassing performance of the fund, and him 
as its sole manager. Despite our collective hopes and efforts, the fund's financial situation has deteriorated to a point where liquidation is the only viable option. As a lead investor with $40,000 at stake and a fellow real estate developer, I've been closely monitoring the situation and conducting extensive research into the fund's operations, which can all be found at www.tulsarealestatefraud.com. That's tulsarealestatefraud.com. Over the past year, I've made numerous attempts to communicate privately with Jay Morrison, the fund's manager, to address concerns and seek clarity on the fund's status long before it got to this point. However, our requests for meetings were repeatedly ignored, leaving me with no choice but to share my findings publicly to ensure that all 15,000 investors worldwide are informed about the actions of the fund's management. Based on the limited information available from the fund's outdated SEC filing and a recent investor call on April 2nd, 2024, it has become apparent that Jay Morrison is proceeding with the liquidation of the fund. The decision is a direct result of the fund's near bankruptcy status, driven by mismanagement, excessive operating costs. Okay, I gotta, you guys, you guys are too viable with me, right? I'm still processing application. I gotta make a quick loom video for my client. Um, so you guys just gonna stick with me here and uh, we'll make this quick video and uh, we're gonna send them an email and let them know what they need to do. Because sometimes, especially when you're doing un, uh, processing UBL, you need your clients to do something, maybe contact the lender. Um, so. Hello, hope all is well. I am sending you a revised uh, application report. As you can see here, um, congratulations, of course. Uh, B of A is 9,000. Uh, Truist, I have not confirmed the amount yet. We do know it's, it's approved. Uh, you let me know the amount. Uh, U.S. Bank, I need your assistance. If, if you can contact this number uh, using the tips given to you on the videos that I sent to you, I need your assistance to verify the status of the application. Make sure you have your recap report in hand. Uh, another thing is I need your assistance with uh, PNC and Navy. Uh, you mentioned you already have an account with them. Since you already have an account with them, they do require you to uh, log in to submit the application. So I'm going to be sending you this link. We're going to be sum submitting an application with PNC Business Credit Card. Uh, you simply click Next, um, and it will allow you to log in. And once you log in, you can proceed with submitting the application. Uh, and similar to that is Navy Federal. Click Start Submitting and sign in right here. And then as soon as you sign in, log in to your account and proceed with submitting the applications. Make sure you use the information given here. And also based on your business type, uh, I generally want to use business services or consulting services. Uh, if you do not find the logistics, I think it's a much better business uh, type because that's what, that's exactly what you do. You don't, you don't necessarily uh, driving, but you're in the logistics field and you're in the consulting. Uh, but anyway, that's it. So to just recap, I need your assistance with Navy and PNC. I also have submitted Comerica and I need you to contact, uh, we're gonna wait for an answer with them and I need you to contact US Bank. Email me the outcome of your submissions with uh, uh, PNC and Navy. Let me know if you have any questions. We need to do this today, please. Thank you. Cost Let's keep it moving. Investment practices. At his last State of the Union address on August 11, 2023, the fund only had $575,531 in cash, which has likely been depleted by now. The Legacy Center, aka the Black House, which was owned in cash for a better part of the six years, was refinanced, which allowed Jay Morrison to extract another $1.5 million from the fund to cover significant operating losses and his sizable management fees. As investors, we must confront the harsh reality of this situation. The probability of recovering our investment capital is exceedingly low, and the fund's remaining assets are insufficient to cover its liabilities. The most egregious violation appears to be the purchase of Jay Morrison's personal residence using the fund's money through an anonymous LLC, as well as a one-sided agreement for the adjacent 27 acres of land, which he will personally own 
entertained for his family mm. when the mm. fund shuts down and cannot act on the fund's right to develop on that land. While the trust subscription agreement granted Jay Morrison significant control over the fund's operations, it doesn't absolve him of his fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the investors. The evidence we have compiled strongly suggests that he has violated this duty through self-dealing, misappropriation of funds, and gross negligence. To address these issues, we have filed numerous complaints, hundreds of complaints, with the SEC, or Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. However, the lack of transparency from these agencies has left us uncertain as to whether our concerns are being properly investigated. The DA's office in particular is currently preoccupied with very high profile cases, which may delay any action on our behalf. In terms of our next steps as investors, many people want to do a class action lawsuit. But class action lawsuits are primarily for going up against big companies that have a lot of assets to draw from on their balance sheet. In this instance, family, there are very few assets to recruit in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, so that would be a waste of time. In light of this, I believe that our best course of action is to mobilize our collective voice and draw attention to our plight. I'm urging all TREF investors to record short videos sharing their stories and experiences with the fund. By posting these videos on social media and tagging the Fulton County DA's office, which is at Fulton County DA, we can put a human face to the thousands of individuals who have been negatively impacted by the situation. If you're willing to join in this effort, please structure your one to two minute video as follows. One, state your name, city, and profession. Two, share how much you invested. Three, explain why you chose to invest in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Four, Express your feelings about the fund's collapse amidst one of the greatest real estate homes in history and how your money was used to purchase Jay Morrison's personal residence and the surrounding 27 acres, as well as to line his health with oh. management fees and questionable deals with his other companies. And a five, clearly state what actions you would like the authority, the SEC or DA, to take, given that the fund remains very little assets to recoup. I'll pause for a second so you can take a screenshot of this. And I encourage you to record your video as soon as this presentation is over while it is top of mind. The more stories we tell, the harder it is for them to ignore us, and the more likely it is that an investigation will take place and justice will be served. It is crucial to emphasize that this is not a personal debt against Jay Morrison, but rather an attempt to hold him accountable for his actions as the fund manager. To whom much is given, much is required. We entrusted him with our hard-earned money, and he had a responsibility to manage it with integrity and professionalism. Unfortunately, the evidence suggests that he has failed in this regard, and we are now forced to bear the consequences. To my fellow investors, I understand your pain, anger, and frustration. You may be experiencing right here, right now, in this moment. It is easy to second-guess our decision to invest in the fund, but we must remember that we believe in a vision of group economic and community development that was greater than one individual. We could not have foreseen the level of mismanagement. And so I'm, I'm trying. Let me pause this for a second. I mean, what, what is the the image that most of these black people have in their mind uh, that think like this? Uh, are they going to be creating uh, a utopia where it's only black people that are successful? Um, I mean, we we live in a. Uh, why people are around, you, you know, like, I, I don't, I, I really don't, don't get this, this thought process, you know, and I know that this sounds very silly and very, um, Uncle Tomish, but it's like, this is America, you know, like this, this, this is America. This is why people land. And given history, how things happen, we were kidnapped, we, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, you can't ignore the history. I'm not sitting here ignoring the history. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy what it is. But how do we move forward to create this black stuff? You know, yes, you can make the argument that this stuff existed, you know, when you're talking about uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund back in the day and, and, and this and that. But the time, it required that. We, we had segregation. There was a white fucking, you know, white's only bathroom, black only bathroom. So it, you had to have a black economic center and a wide economic center and the, the, the but it's not like that right now you know so 
I, I'm, I just say this to let you know, I'm, I, don't, I really cannot comprehend the vision that the Jay Morrisons have in their mind when they're talking about this black stuff, this black whatever, black actualist, black this and that. Are they really envisioning the Tulsa Wall Street stuff that happened with the, you know, and I know what they're talking about. I've seen the movies. That app, that really existing right now in 2024, you know, like the, the, the empowerment in the black communities that we had in Harlem back in the day, that cannot exist. I mean, what are you, what are we talking about, man? It just can't. Deception that would occur. As we navigate this difficult time together, I encourage you to focus on your own well-being and financial recovery. Do not allow this setback to define or to deter you from pursuing your dream and investing in the future. We must learn from this experience and use it to become better stewards of our resources and advocates of our community. To those who have remained silent, yes, you know who you are, or enabled Jay Morrison's behavior, you I implore you to come forward and share what you know. This is not about personal gain or vengeance, but about ensuring that justice is served and that others are not victimized in the future, especially by Jay Morrison. Remember, when Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme collapsed, five other individuals were convicted with him for their involvement. We know who you are. LT, MF, JP, MM, TO, TP, and last but not least, EJ. Your names appear on the fund's website in addition to the SEC filings, and you are in photographs and videos. I urge you to come forward with what you know and clear your name before any potential investigations commence. EJ, Jay Morrison's wife in particular, we call upon you to provide proof of payment for the 50 plus hours you spent using the fund's podcasting studio to record your It's Negotiable podcast. With the going rate for studio time in Atlanta, at about $75 per hour or more, we demand transparency on whether you have been using the space for free. The money is negligible, but if there is no evidence of payment, it further highlights Jay Morrison's lack of integrity and effort to make the fund successful. The people deserve answers. In this manner, it is non-negotiable. It is bitter irony that the Tulsa Real Estate Fund named after the tragic destruction of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by a white mob, has been burned down from within by a black man who exploited the legacy and the resilience of our ancestors for his own personal gain. This is a painful reminder that we must remain vigilant and protect our communities from those who seek to take advantage of our trust and aspirations. Unfortunately, all skin folk are not kin folk. To the investors who may be experiencing feelings of shame or embarrassment, I want to assure you that you are not alone and you are not to blame. It is natural for your friends, family, and followers to question your judgment and in the wake of this crisis, but I urge all of them to refrain from saying things like, I told you so, or attacking your intelligence. We made a good faith investment in what we believe to be a promising opportunity for our community. The fault lies with those who abuse our trust not with us for having faith in the potential for collective economic empowerment. We invested in the right asset class, which is real estate, with the wrong asset manager. I'll repeat that. We invested in the right asset class with the wrong asset manager. $11.7 million could have and should have been leveraged into at least a $40 million real estate portfolio after six years. Unfortunately, this you know, You know what the crazy thing, thing is? Um, we just went through one of the most amazing real estate rises ever in history after COVID. Real estate prices went up like crazy, 50 plus percent. If they would have just invested this, I think it would probably have been over a hundred million dollars. It's just, this is sad. In the midst of one of real estate's greatest goals. Yeah. As we move forward, I want to express my deepest gratitude to those who have supported me throughout this ordeal. Your encouragement and solidarity have been a source of strength and motivation for me. I also want to thank the whistleblowers, the investors, non-investors, insiders, influencers, and private investigators who have come forward with information and evidence. Your courage and commitment to the truth are commendable and will not be forgotten. Most importantly, I want to thank all of the TREP investors for their belief in the power of collective action and group economics. 
Though we have suffered a setback, I believe that our resilience and determination will carry us through these difficult times. We must not allow this experience to dampen our spirits or our resolve to build a better future for ourselves, our children, and, and our for black people at large. I urge you to record your videos and share them widely. Let your voices be heard and let us hold those responsible for this travesty accountable. Together, we can ensure that the lessons of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund are never forgotten and that we emerge stronger, wiser, and more unified than ever before. In closing, I call upon Jay Morrison to face the investors he has wronged, even if he manages to evade legal consequences. Miss Michelle, how we doing? Doing awesome. Uh, just checking in to see where we at. No problem, no problem. And I think um, we're at what, PNC or, let me see, let me look at my notes. Yeah, just PNC, okay. Yeah, give me an update, okay, I think you already got the account set up. Um, yeah, let me, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Do you guys have a truest down there? Truest, truest bank. It's, um, let me see. It used to be called SunTrust. They merged with uh, with another comp um Let me call. It. Let me see it here. Trust. Let me see in your area. I think. Let me look it up and I'll I'll, I'll let you know because they're they're giving out great approvals right now. I think it would be worth your time to maybe stop by a a, a branch. Let me let me yes yes. Uh, Give me like 10 minutes and I'll, I'll send you some details on it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right, he owes us an explanation and an apology for his actions. There were only 53 out of 15,000 Trek investors on the April 2nd investor call because the fund's communications and notifications have been sparse or non-existent. This is a public fund and therefore warrants a public explanation and must be able to bear public scrutiny. Therefore, I challenge you, Jay Morrison, to emerge from hiding behind the camera, stand before the people in public, just like your former classes, and account for your failures as the fund manager face to face with the people. Only by confronting the truth and accepting responsibility can we hope to heal the wounds inflicted upon our community by you. Let us use this moment as a catalyst for change, learning, and growth. May we never forget the hard lessons learned from the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, and may we always strive to uplift and empower one another in the face of adversity. Together, we will rise above this challenge and build a brighter, more equitable future for all. I wish you all strength, wisdom, and perseverance to overcome this obstacle and emerge victorious. Thank you. Please take a moment to record your video post it on social media, share it with me via DM on Instagram, or post it in our Tulsa Real Estate Fund Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash group forward slash track E-R-E-F life. Thanks. All right. There, there you have it. Uh, there is a link in the chat if you would like to call in. I'd like to hear from you guys. I mean, I've covered this Crazy. topic enough. I think you guys understand my position. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about, I guess this is the official end of the uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund. There's a link pinned to the chat, but I want to make sure I give a shout out to each and every one of you guys who came through. I thank you so much. Uh, it says, voice is no different from TJ Henry. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's some differences. There's some differences there. 
right, all right. It, then uh, R. Chapman says, JT is sad, man, because so many of us tried to warn so many. I know, 11 million down the drain. Keep up the good work, though. Yeah, man. And a uh, big niche in the building says Jim Morrison needs to be arrested. All right, we got some people back here, so I'm going to bring you out. Just hold tight. I'm going to bring you out. Thank you for calling in. But understand this. I don't want to make the victims of this fund feel as if, oh, you were so stupid to do that. Because that's not how investing works. There's supposed to be safeguards to help people who are not sophisticated investors understand what's going on, if this makes sense for you or if it does not make sense for you. When you have many, 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 many popular uh, urban podcasts and Instagram pages and all that stuff who were promoting this, then, I mean, there's not much you can say. But I want to give a shout out to a few people before I start bringing up callers. Uh, the few people who I saw in the forefront before I even had a YouTube channel who were touching on this topic was Eli from What Happened in Common Sense, uh, Yvette Cornell from Breaking Brown, and uh, Tone Talks, right? Antonio Moore. These are people who were at the very beginning letting people know, hey, this does not look like a good investment. So, um, hold on here. Okay, so I attempted Truist, and uh, unfortunately, they do not accept business applications online for applicants who are outside their geographical footprint. Uh, when I look up your location in New York, the closest ones is in New Jersey. Uh, they're giving out great approvals right now. Uh, so, now, you mentioned that you're in D.C. days, a ton of pr Truists. Uh, in DC, you just have to find some something that is close to you. Um, what I suggest is visit a local branch. Um, you know, uh, mention that you're interested in applying for this business credit card. Uh, let me see which one are we wanting to get. We want the one with the zero percent offer. Um, Truist Business Cash Rewards. You can choose between this or this. Uh, if you want the rewards, uh, if that makes sense for you, I think this one has a much lower rate, uh, but it still has a zero percent offer. But you want to select this one. Uh, I'm not able again to apply on your behalf due to the footprint, as they say. But they do. Uh, if you walk into the local branch, uh, you can apply. Make sure you have your recap report, which I'm going to be sending to you as well. So you need to have your recap report on hand. Apply for this. Um, you know, the I know some of your business operation is in Africa, but uh, I wouldn't mention that just to, you know, so they don't ask any or, or increase any red flags or something like that. Uh, you are a U.S.-based business. I think you're incorporated in um, in, in Delaware. Uh, yes, incorporated in Delaware. That, that's just about it. So go ahead and get this submitted. Um, go to a local U.S., uh, what is it, Truist Bank. Apply for either one of the two that I just mentioned. This rewards. Understand that you're paying a much inter higher interest rate and email me the outcome of this application as well as the PNC application. Uh, and please, just, let's make sure we can get this done before the end of the week. Thank you. An idea. And what did they get for that? They got a lot of hate. They were called a lot of names. Jay Morrison was studying on them. But now look. So big shout out to them. And of course, big shout out to Tony the Closer, Tony Robinson. Uh, a lot of this awareness really comes from his campaign with his personal issues with Jay Morrison that grew to more awareness of what's going on in the whole financial literacy hookup shortcut type of game shouts out to tony we appreciate it all right so let me bring up some callers we got brandon uh let me bring brandon up to the stage here we go brandon you're live on air what's going on oh. 
Brandon just dropped. Let me bring up the next caller. You, your name is New Age. Yes, New Age, thoughts. you're live on the air. What's going on? Yeah, how you doing, JT? Um, I'm good, man. What do you think about this uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund? It looks like the legacy is over. The Tulsa Real Estate Fund is done. And not one dollar was actually put in Tulsa Real <laughs> in any type, type of Tulsa Real Estate Fund. <laughs> What do you no, think? no, no, one dollar. It's funny, I will give a, a, a open parenthesis. I, I like to spend time looking at black and black American investor. And one thing that I noticed that caught my attention is, is the, I guess you will say the traditional, the culture effects that kind of plague the black American community. Mm-hmm. Where mm. if anything sounds catchy or anything mm. desires a heart or you see a group of people kind of pledging towards it, You'll see, you'll typically see the typical black American. When I say typical, I don't mean all, but you'll see the typical black American go and fetch that idea without really doing his due diligence, right? right? It's like a group of rats. You give one food to a particular rat, the, the other rats smell the food, and all of a sudden, you haste delusion or confusion among all of them. I will say this um, to close that parenthesis, I saw. Uh, when I was sitting at this um, broken down place down here in Baltimore, I noticed that anything flashy or anything that gives the black American a little bit of a chest pump, or they could put on a resume and speak in a congregation among each other, they tend to not want to do their due diligence. They tend mm-hmm. to forget that there's a homework that has to be done. There is a pathway that you need to and take. This is an African there's guy right that there. you need to get, right? You just don't go in the water and start fishing without knowing how to fish. You must first understand the programs that come behind it or the understanding that you must gain to be cautious behind those trivial business ideas that you're getting into. And this is why I like your channel. It's because you, you speak of a literacy that Black Americans usually don't have. It's not only the literacy of finance, but the understanding, using the brain and being able to common sense find one or two studies between the people that are investing and saying used to call it common or blangata or what have you received right. how can you put it to a parallel to someone else but then like i said as i as i'm observing black american i'm, I'm african as i'm observing black american i i see this trivial plague they almost plague every black american community where they are almost like herds of sheep when you get a good shepherd they all flesh to the same place. That's, That's all I crazy. All right. Well, listen, uh, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. So I got true, the next caller coming up, so I want to thank you. But I will say this. We can't just say it's just the black American. All right? It's, marketing has an impact on all cultures. All cultures, there is a huge impact when it comes to marketing. If you make it cool, if you make it flashy, People will run to it. That's why there should be stronger rules within the SEC. The SEC is the government body that is supposed to regulate the investing world. There are, should be stronger rules about the way investments are marketed. And you can't just say, you know, the American Negro or the American Black, because there's whole countries in Africa who throw their money away at silly things and silly investments, so and all over the world. But I, I absolutely get your point. But we can't just point at the African Americans that the way it's sold here is differently. Silly JT. investments based on marketing, because I mean, most of the uh, African continent, most of that money goes towards things that are not actually. Uh, That's corruption. It's a little bit There's different. Whole government, I disagree uh, with you there, JT. That are being siphoned off by That's other corruption. countries because of a lack of financial literacy. But no, I get your point. Not, not, right, not, let me bring up no, the I disagree with you on that, Ms. JT. L- corruption L- and lack of financial L- literacy L- are two Shabazz, different things. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on, JT? I'm coming through, Cliff. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm actually 26 minutes late to the show, man, but I just had a thought to, to share to ask you. You know, I was thinking about um, how that brother, uh, uh, Jay Morrison, was able to raise $13 million, and the thought that came to my mind, how did you go wrong with $13 million? I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, like, no, I, I, think, exactly. I mean, do you think you, I mean, okay, put $13 million in JT's pocket. I mean, can you make it happen? 
Yeah, but see, that's unfair. It's an unfair comparison. Okay, Jay Morrison is a high school dropout, three-time felon who sold crack cocaine to his father. <laughs> I'm an actual financial advisor who went to school for this. I'm licensed and certified uh, to give financial advice. Oh my God! Understand what are good investments and what are bad investments. So that's a bad comparison. But I will say this. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, well, I put it, let me put it like this. No, I'm not, not trying to compare you to the brother. But I mean, like, if you think you could have helped him? Like, brother, you got 13 million. Man. Let me help you out. Right. Go ahead. Much better question. Much better question. And I'll say this. Yes, I could have. But so could have a bunch of different people. Throughout the country, throughout the culture, there's a lot of people who could have helped him. I believe in who he could have Julian attempted to try to help the man. I believe his own ego kept him from being able to get right. help. He even admitted it. So during one of his more recent interviews, he admitted it. He said that while he was trying to raise the money, there were a lot of people who were not helping him in the way that he wanted help. Then when he got the money, these Ooh. same people said that, hey, I want to help you. At that point, he said, well, since I raised the money without you, I can manage the money without you. And I give him credit for openly admitting that it was his own ego that kept him from bringing in the minds, bringing in the experience that would have helped him manage that money. But when you also add in the fact, like, if we just leave it in a vacuum, just say, Tulsa Real Estate Fund by himself, he was not equipped to be able to manage that money by himself. But when you add in his past, that's the point that I think people need to focus on. Add in his past, all the other old business partners who have made claims that he jerked them out of their money. There's a man who openly admits it's in court documents that Jay Morrison was supposed to sell a home as a real estate agent. He was supposed to sell a home at a particular price, then the money would be split amongst the partners. The other partners didn't even know that Jay Morrison sold the house until they drove by the house and saw people in it. And then they found out he didn't even sell the house for the price that they told him to sell it for. He sold it for less and kept the money in his pocket, according to the court documents. He did that years before the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Do you think that he changed his ways? Some people will say, well, JT, he went to prison and he changed his ways in prison. He found he had his come to Jesus moment. He went to prison and came out before he got into real estate. So the real estate deal where his business partners say that he jerked them out of money, that was after he got out of prison. So did he have another come to Jesus moment? It's like at this point, a person's history has to play a factor in your evaluation on if you're going to give them money to him. Right, but uh, Malik, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for coming up. I got uh, some other callers here, and I'm not going to be on be on for super, super long. I just wanted to see what Julian had to say and what you, the audience, the pocket watches, the pocket watches. Uh, we got official brother. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it. I think it I'm gonna keep it short. Uh, uh, I, I don't. I'm a. You know, I don't want to make this too long. I'm still over here processing applications. As you can see, I'm about to get into. Um, doing some business credit building and consulting work. I got some clients that I need to help uh, get them ready for some funding. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of that. Uh, but it's just kind of a day in me processing, doing some loans, as you guys can see. So if you like this type of content, uh, you want a little bit of more of some Brian rants, me kind of doing a little bit of this, uh, exposing you to my day to day. Let me know. Links in the description. Peace out. Bye.